Hey crew, I have the key to the last Lamborghini Aventador model being produced. It's called the LP780-4 Ultimate, and I can't believe I get to say we are gonna take it for a drive. But first, let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. Up front, the Ultimate is distinguished by a carbon fiber front splitter and these red accents near the functional corner vents. This one's painted in a two-tone matte grigio. It's a cement color up top and then a darker gray down low. We have the distinctive LED daytime running lights, LED headlights, and then turn signals show up there. In profile, the jutting nose that honestly looks like it would cut you if you ran your finger against it. Gloss black wheels, 20 inch front, 21 inch rear, wrapped in Pirelli P0 Corsa tires, 255 section front, 355 in the rear. Oh my gosh. Inside, standard carbon ceramic brakes, six piston calipers up front. They're painted in red as an option on this one. The carbon fiber side sills, there's a plaque here that shows this is the first produced of 350 total Ultima Coupes. Scoops and ducts to satisfy everyone, including this giant one to that radiator on the side. Italian flag garnish there. See the two-tone better here. Stepping back to look at the profile. Is this not a Batmobile you can drive on public roads? It is just impossibly low. The shape gouges the air as it drives forward. The Aventador is 11 years old, but you just don't care looking at it. It's incredible. At the back, we have these LED taillights, opening ventilation, these two cannons for exhaust outlets in the center, fully carbon fiber lower bumper, including a giant diffuser with red accents. Through the glass partition, you can see the gold covered, gold colored V12 engine with the carbon fiber X brace. The rear is just hilariously wide. The whole car, it, it, I mean, brings out the child in you. It just dares you to dream. Let's look at the interior. Opening up the scissor doors or billionaire doors and looking inside at this blacked out cabin with red accents. These seats are not heated. They're not ventilated. They are power adjustable on their carbon fiber frames. The inserts are Alcantara. You get Ultima stitched on the bolster in red, red accents all throughout, and then leather on the borders. There's a red stitched Lamborghini crest up on the headrest. The headliner is all in Alcantara. If you do wanna look in at the engine, you press in here and then pull on that lever there to raise up the lid. On the door, it's a mix of leather and Alcantara with more red accents. The same pattern here we saw on the seats and a few different places in this cabin. Gloss carbon fiber looks very nice. Power adjusting and power folding door mirrors. There's the upgraded Sensenum 10 speaker sound system here. An illuminated carbon fiber sill plate, aluminum pedals, Pull this lever to access the front trunk where there's five cubic feet of space. It is not giant, but it is pretty deep. Now, getting inside is a bit of a chore. Here's my recommendation. Lower yourself onto the sill, then watch your head because that's, that's what I'm looking at at six feet tall. I crunch really far forward and then I scoot over. Hopefully people are looking at the car during this process, not at you. To pull down the door, you've got actually two handles. And now in front of the driver, I've got a digital instrument cluster. It is reconfigurable based on the drive mode. Strata being the most, or Corsa being the most dramatic change. Then you've got carbon fiber for the housing. Alcantara all over the dashboard. I like this red cross stitch pattern and the red accent. More of that imprint and then Lamborghini on the passenger side. There is a very, very small infotainment system here. This is where the Aventador is showing its age. It is not a touchscreen as well. You control it via this dial here. It does have Apple CarPlay, amazingly. Carbon fiber in gloss is all around that area. I love these switches here to control everything from the windows to the raising of the nose to the traction control system. There's a single zone of auto climate here. And then your gear selection is down low. More than imprint on the Alcantara leather 
around the console. And then this is some of the only storage in the Aventador. Open this up and you can see you can pretty much fit a credit card, which that's probably all an Aventador owner would need. They bring their black card and they bring the car. USB port there and a DC outlet. There is a shelf back here. We could store a duffel bag, no problem. And then on the steering wheel, we've got Alcantara wrapping. It's a squared off bottom. The size and thickness is ideal. Red center marker here. You have the garage door opener. That's a $700 accessory. My line of sight is terrible, actually. So I have four and a half to five inches of visibility. If it is sunny and I need this, now it's about an inch and a half. Headroom, not great. If I sit upright, my head is pressed against the roof. No good. If I slouch forward, then I'm okay. Visibility, also not great. That's your back viewing angle. Seems fine, but then the blind spot starts there and it really, because this is actually blocking your view, goes all the way to that pillar. So once again, hopefully people are looking at the car. They're looking out for you. The cabin just swathed in Alcantara communicates not let's take the Aventador Ultima on a weekend road trip. It's let's go enjoy the drive. So let's do it. All right, with trepidation, I say, let's fire it up. That's just so fun to do. The startup from the NAV12 is not quite as loud as I expected, but I'll tell you what I've forgotten since the last time I drove an Aventador. It's how loud those fans become. They're louder than the car at idle, than the engine noise at idle after they've kicked on, and they stay on for a while after you turn off the car. To start, we are going to be in strata drive mode, or street drive mode, the daily driving, most comfortable setting for the Aventador. And to throw it in reverse, we press this button here. That brings up an adequate resolution backup camera. It's not bad, it's just, it's not amazing. We do have trajectory lines, and then I'm going to release the emergency brake, and we can start our drive. To go into drive, you have to pull the right paddle. But that doesn't put you in manual mode, it just means that you're engaging first gear. And we will do the turning radius test a bit later. And for now, we can get on with the world famous horn test. Let's hear it. Interesting. I actually expected an Audi horn, you know, given the owners of Lamborghini, but that was, that felt more Italian. A little shoutier. Let's talk powertrain. 6.5 liter naturally aspirated V12. No supplication from forced induction, no electrification, just cylinders, fuel, and air. The product of which is 769 horsepower and 531 pound-feet of torque in the Ultima. That power is routed through a single-clutch automated manual transmission and sent to all four tires. The transmission is not a modern concept. I think the last time I drove something with this gearbox was the last generation Aston Martin Vantage, and it felt pretty much the same, which is to say, it's a little like driving with someone who's learning how to drive a standard manual gearbox. There's a lot of sloshing forward and backward, especially in the first couple gears. And so it's 
really difficult to drive the Avengador LP780-4 smoothly. It's, it's just going to be a little bit of a slog. And that's something that you're going to have to deal with to drive something this extravagant. Another note, if you sit at a stoplight for long enough, it will put the gearbox back into neutral and then you have to pull the paddle again to get moving. I learned that because I forgot about it and we went into neutral and I sat there and I sounded like I was just trying to rev the engine of the stoplight like someone who's obnoxious. You just have to be aware and you hear a little chime that says we're going back into neutral and you got to pay attention to the gauge cluster and then you pull the paddle and you're back into drive. They're just little peculiarities to the event store that you don't have in another Lamborghini, the Huracan, with the dual clutch gearbox there. We've got seven speeds, automated manual. It gets it takes some getting used to. I've spoken quite a bit about how I don't quite fit comfortably in this seat. My head would be pressed against the roof if I wasn't in this position, scooting my butt forward, losing all of the potential lower back support, but now actually having the clearance and being able to see as well as possible out of this narrow front glass. The seat itself is a little on the firm side, so it all sort of communicates this, let's keep the drive brief. Exciting, but brief. Now for our turning radius test, which is pretty darn good. We can thank the rear wheel steering for that. So at low speeds, the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction of the front to kind of pivot the car. Whereas at high speeds, they turn in the same direction to give you added stability. So far, we're saying it's not too comfortable. And there is one more layer to that, and that is the ride quality. We do have adaptive dampers in this car, and there is variation as you go through the drive mode, Strata versus Sport versus Course. It does get firmer, but even in Strata, you are on the firmer side here. The bumps do jostle you. Now we need to talk about performance because that is a giant chunk of the equation here so let's do a zero to 60 test in the event store ultimate for that zero to 60 test i do have my race box set up here but we need to make some adjustments to the calibration of our drive mode so we go over to corsa then i'm going to pull this tab to take esc off and then i have to do one last step put it into manual mode this unlocks the ability for thrust mode they call it it's the launch control system where you just hold your foot hard on the brake, pin the throttle, wait for it to build up revs, and then let it go. Here we go. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Wow, holy cow. That was so much more brutal. So much more brutal than I anticipated. I, I've done a lot of launches, guys. You've seen a number of them. The way this shot out of the hole was a, prove, a true and proper definition of a launch. We were launched from a dig, 260, in three seconds flat. Now, Lamborghini says you can do it in as quick as 2.7. I believe it, we were on a slight uphill there and there was a little loss of traction, just a tiny bit off the line. But, good heavens, was that ferocious and the upshift <laughs> now Lamborghini says and this is just a really nice way of talking around the fact that they're using a little bit of a, a dated gearbox design 
They say that the, the gear changes, the way that they kick you, is like a bull kicking. And you know what? Sure. For theatrics sake, <laughs> let's just say it's like a bull kicking because it feels like that. And though I know mechanically what's going on, I don't care. Now, let's go back into manual mode and see how this gearbox operates beyond launch control. So the downshifts aren't rapid. They're, they're quick, they're just not exceedingly quick. They take a sec. And now, Okay, forget the mockery of the single clutch automated manual. The way it does change gear is part of the fun. It's part of the fun. pleasure. I... This car is so special. It is so incredibly special. The NAV12, the heart and soul of this vehicle, means so much to the automotive enthusiast. The soundtrack is unlike anything else. It brings back memories of when Formula One was using the same kind of engines. The theater, the visceral nature of it, it just grabs you and sucks you into the experience in a way that turbocharged, supercharged, elect electrically assisted engines and powertrains just do not. They can't do it. The all-wheel drive system delivers all of that power fluidly with grip. The momentum building is, is just insane. And then it does calm down. But before we calm down properly, Let's take the Aventador LP780 Ultima through a corner. We've gone back into Corsa, get into those carbon ceramics. You can feel the rear wheel steering. You can feel the torque vectoring. You can feel the limited slip differential in the rear. All of it working in concert because it just is glued to the ground. And it doesn't do it with wild amounts of aerodynamics like the McLaren 765LT. That little wing back there isn't generating quite the same amount of downforce, and certainly not at the speeds that we're doing. It's just doing it with, with tons of mechanical grip, 355 section rear tires, a great suspension system, the torque vectoring of the front and rear axles, the limited slip differential, the rear wheel steering, all of those coming in concert and just giving this vehicle unbelievable thresholds. What a car. What a car. How do I get, how did I get to this position? How do I get to drive these things? I, I don't even understand. All right, you know, We've got ego mode, but we're gonna go back into Strata. Take it out of manual. We'll just cruise for a sec. 
talk about the highway experience. The engine never goes truly quiet. It's always in the background. You kind of hear the lifters going all the time. The cabin is, it's okay. It's reasonably well insulated. There's quite a bit of tire noise. Again, they're massive, massive tires. 21 inch wheels in the rear, 20s in the front. The wind noise isn't really that bad. It's a pretty aerodynamic shape. I've yet to see, you know, I've yet to see cruise control even as a function on this vehicle. So highway cruising, not really gonna be your thing. If you wanna hear the Sensenum sound system, watch my PUV night drive where I have started to add some very brief impressions at the, at the end there. I didn't actually share an impression about the sound system, but my impression is that it's probably not worth the premium for this car. Maybe go aftermarket on a sound system for the Aventador. This car is about getting the kid in you to wake up. Much like the V12 when it wakes up around 5,000, 6,000 RPM. Getting that kid to wake up and enjoy the position that he or she is in. Driving this car is a special occasion. It's barely changed in 11 years of production, but that's because they got it so, so right to start things off. It's an enthralling driving experience. I know the electrified version of the V12 engine, thank goodness Lamborghini is sticking with the V12 right now. The electrified version of that is going to make more power, but for now, just having this recipe, this flavor right now, is something incredible that we should savor while it's here. I certainly am. And now we should talk about pricing and competition. The starting figure for the Aventador Ultime is just under $502,000. That's for one of the 350 coupes. If you want one of the Roadster models, they're only going to make 250 of those, it's $550,500. A couple specs I didn't share for the Aventador Ultima. The fuel economy is atrocious. 9 mpg in the city, 16 on the highway, and 11 combined. I've gone through fuel like it's going out of style, which it, right at this very moment in time, with gas prices the way they are, it's actually a big issue. Maybe not for someone who can afford this car, but for me, it is. And the top speed of the Aventador Ultima is 221 miles per hour. Good gravy, that's fast. Compare it to vehicles like the McLaren 765 LT Coupe. That one's $368,000 to start. It makes 755 horsepower. It gets to 60 in 2.6 seconds. The top speed is 205 miles per hour. And the fuel economy is a reasonable 15 combined. Then there is the Ford GT. It starts at $500,000. It makes 660 horsepower. It gets to 60 in three seconds flat. Top speed is 200 and uh, I cannot remember off the top of my head. It's in the spec and the fuel economy is 14 combined. Then we have the Ferrari SF90 Stradale. That one is $511,000, maybe $512,000 to start. It makes 986 horsepower. It gets to 60 in two and a half seconds. The top speed is 200 and also can't remember, it's in the spec. Of those vehicles, Admittedly, I have only driven the McLaren 765 LT Coupe, and I did walk away from that car going, this is as good of a road car as I've driven that it is apparently somehow street legal. I still feel that way. The Ultima is better looking than the McLaren. It just draws more attention. It makes you feel like a superhero in a way that the 765 LT, when you come up to it, you're like, wow, but it doesn't do the same thing as this car. However, the 765 LT is quicker. He did have more space inside. It was more comfortable. And I feel like at, you know, 140,000, 130,000 less than this, you're getting a lot of car for that. 
but honestly, when we're talking these prices, it's whichever one you want, and you probably can have both if you wanted both. So get them both because the NAV12 in this car is a marvel. And I'm I'm so grateful for the chance to drive this vehicle. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this PV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I will see you again next time. Thank you.